Ever since some geniuses decided to put omnibuses on steel rails in 1807, in the town of Swansea, United Kingdom, we've had trams. Although most of us could instantly recognize a tram when we see one, the vehicles themselves and the systems they run in vary dramatically across the world. In this video, I'd like to take one tram system from every continent and rank them in a tier list style fashion. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Europe, the birthplace of trams. Many of the most extensive tram networks in the world are located here, like the network of St. Petersburg, Russia, with 205.5 kilometers or 127.7 miles of track. The system I want to focus on in Europe is the one in my home city of Prague, Czech Republic. The tram system of Prague has been in operation from 1875, with electric trams running in the city from 1891. The first tracks laid in the city ran through here, from today's Palladium Mall to the YMCA Palace in the city center. The Prague tram system is often called one of the best tram systems in Europe, and I can definitely see why. With 150 kilometers, or 93.2 miles of track, and 782 trams, the system manages to carry about 380 million passengers per year, in a city of about 1.3 million people. This makes it the second busiest tram system in the whole world, just after Budapest, Hungary. The trams run frequently throughout the whole day and night, with headways ranging from a few minutes in the morning and evening rush hours, to 30 minutes in the dead of night. One huge benefit of the Prague tram system is its affordability. Tickets work on a time basis, with a 30 minute ticket costing 30 Czech crowns or 1.22 euros and a 90 minute ticket costing 40 Czech crowns or 1.62 euros. A yearly unlimited pass costs 3650 Czech crowns or 148.16 euros. Comparing this price to income data from the Czech Statistical Office, a yearly unlimited public transport pass in Prague costs less than 1% of the median worker's income. That means that it's absolutely possible that the average citizen of Prague will spend more on beer in their local pub than on their transit pass. One notable flaw of Prague's trams is wheelchair accessibility. The city mostly uses two models of trams, a refurbished version of the older Tatra T3 and the new, low-floor Škoda 15T. Whereas the Škoda 15T is completely low floor and wheelchair accessible, the Tatra T3s are not. The refurbished Tatra T3 models are still the most prevalent tram models in the city, so if you're coming here on a wheelchair, or with a stroller, or with crutches, you might have a slightly worse time. There are T3 variants running in the city with low floor segments, but these are the exception rather than the norm. Thankfully, Prague just recently ordered completely new, 32 meter long tram models, which are completely low floor. The first ones should start operating in the city in 2025. Overall, I'm putting the Prague tram system in the S tier, for its extensive network, frequency, affordability, reliability and ridership. The only thing that keeps it from making it almost perfect is the hit or miss wheelchair accessibility. Now, let's move to the new world. For an example of an American tram system, I will choose the Toronto Streetcar. Although there are two light rail systems with higher ridership than the Toronto Streetcar, namely the Guadalajara light rail in Guadalajara, Mexico, and the C-Train in Calgary, Canada, I'd argue that those are closer to light metros than to trams. The Toronto Streetcar is purely a tram system, and so, I will consider it as the tram system with the most ridership in America. Like with Prague, the Toronto streetcar has been running since the mid-19th century. Horse-drawn trams have been in operation since the 1860s, and the first electric tram was introduced in 1890. This means that the system is just slightly older than most US senators. Unlike a lot of European tram systems, the Toronto streetcar is mostly confined to downtown Toronto, with a select few lines reaching into the inner suburbs. The network is also not as extensive as many other systems, with 83 kilometers or 51.6 miles of track for a city of 3 million people. Streetcars in Toronto run quite frequently, with 10 minute or better headways during the day and 30 minute headways at night. While Toronto is definitely a wealthier city with a higher median income than Prague, the affordability of the Toronto streetcar system is considerably worse. 
Tickets in the city work on a per trip basis, with a single trip costing 3.35 Canadian dollars or 2.25 euros. A yearly unlimited pass costs 1,716 Canadian dollars or 1,152 euros. According to income data from the 2021 Canadian Census, a yearly Toronto Transit Pass costs 4.3% of the median worker's salary. Although the scale of the system isn't as great as some other ones, and it's less affordable, it still carries 69 million people per year. Unfortunately, Toronto's trams face some critical challenges, most notably them being stuck in traffic. While some routes have dedicated right-of-ways, lots of them run on the same road as regular passenger cars, which causes them to get stuck in traffic. If taking transit is considerably slower than driving a car, people will choose to drive, until the time it takes to travel by car becomes similar to the time it takes to go by transit. This phenomenon is called the Downs Thompson Paradox. If you want to learn more about it, check out Not Just Bikes' video on the topic, link is in the description. Overall, I'm putting the Toronto Streetcar in the B tier. It's a solid, decently affordable system, but it unfortunately suffers from numerous flaws. Next up, let's go to the most populated continent, Asia. Not many cities in Asia have tram systems, as most tore them out in favor of subways, other heavy rail, or cars. However, a few cities, especially in Japan, still retain their tram systems. For an example of an Asian tram system, I will choose the Hiroshima tram system. The system has been operating since 1912, opened as part of the rapid industrialization of Japan, started by Emperor Meiji. The 1.17 million person city of Hiroshima hosts the longest tram network in Japan, with 35.1 kilometers, or 21.8 miles of track, which is considerably lower than most tram systems of similarly sized cities. Trams run all around the city, with most lines meeting in the center. The frequency is also decent, with headways of 10 to 15 minutes. Tickets in the city work on a per-trip basis, with a single trip costing 220 Japanese yen, or about 1.3 euros for most lines. I couldn't find the price for a yearly pass. According to income data from Salary Expert, tram travel in Hiroshima is very affordable, even for lower income people. Because of these factors, ridership is generally decent considering the track length, with roughly 55 million passengers per year. The system has survived numerous large changes and events, most notably the atomic bombing of the city on the 6th of August 1945. Even though a large number of employees in the public transport company, called Hiroden, perished, and most of the trams were destroyed in the blast, just three days later, on the 9th of August 1945, the trams started running again. Three trams which survived, or were rebuilt after the blast, are still running in the city to this day. Overall, I'm putting Hiroshima's trams in the A- tier, with great affordability, but somewhat lacking network size, and by extension, lower ridership. Still a great system overall. Next up, let's move to the land down under. A few cities in Australia have tram systems, but the most iconic is the one in Melbourne. Melbourne's tram system is the most extensive in the world, with 250 kilometers, or 160 miles of track, for a city of 5.3 million people. Over 200 million passengers ride the system every year, making it one of the most popular tram systems in the world. Trams run all around the city, with most lines converging in the city center. The frequency is decent, with trams running every 10 minutes or less during the day, and every 20 to 30 minutes during off-peak hours. Tickets work on a per-trip basis, with a single trip costing 5.3 Australian dollars, or 3.24 euros. A yearly unlimited pass costs 2,067 Australian dollars, or 1,264 euros. According to income data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, a yearly transit pass costs about 3.5% of the median yearly individual income. Unfortunately, the same problem that plagues the trams in Toronto exists in Melbourne. The vehicles get stuck in traffic quite frequently due to a lack of separate right-of-ways. Overall, I'm putting Melbourne's trams in the A- tier as well. The system is extensive, ridership is great, but it suffers from considerable issues with delays and similar stuff. Next up, let's move to the oldest continent. Most cities in Africa don't have fully fleshed out public transport systems, and the few that do are mostly concentrated around the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. 
However, for this segment, I want to focus on the tram system in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Addis Ababa's tram system is the only operating tram system in Sub-Saharan Africa, opened in 2015. The system has been built by Chinese investors as part of the Global Belt and Road Initiative. The rolling stock also consists of Chinese-built trams. The system consists of two lines, with a total track length of 31.6 kilometers, or 19.6 miles, for a city of 5.7 million people. The two lines of the system lead to the south and east of the city, converging in the center. Frequencies are good, with 10-minute headways during the day, and 20-30 to 30 minute headways at off-peak hours. Currently, the system carries about 20 million passengers per year, but it has the capacity to carry over 40 million per year. Tickets work on a per-trip basis, with a single trip costing 6 Ethiopian burr, or about 0.1 euros. I couldn't find the price for a yearly pass. According to numerous sources for the average income in the city, the system is decently affordable for average people in the city. Overall, I'm putting the Addis Ababa tram system in the C tier for now. It definitely has potential, but as of now, it's far too small for a city of its size. Next up, let's move to the frozen continent. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support the channel, I've launched channel memberships on my Ko-Fi page. From just 1 euro per month, you can gain access to numerous benefits, like early access to my videos. I've also put some affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any support would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's last brain cell, who has supported the channel with the top membership tier. I'm so grateful for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! A yearly unlimited pass costs 3,600... Mm -hmm. ah. There are teeth... Mm -hmm. For an example of an Asian tram system, I will choose the Hiroshima train. <coughs> Tickets work on a per trip basis, with a single trip costing 6 Ethiopian burr, or about 0.1 euros. I couldn't find the price for a yearly... Mm, bro...